Hey everybody, it's This Epic Disaster. We are here in a totally different location. It's not the studio. It's not. It's not the studio. It's, um, uh, we've been here before. We have once. <laughs> once upon a time. Maybe twice. Now, I've been here several times. You're here every day. Um, we got a little uh, porn going on on your couch. Don't talk about the porn on my couch. Um, it, and I gave it away on your couch. We are here in your apartment. We are. Your house. What and you it's not it? porn. It's, 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 it's what dogs do to clean themselves. Uh, your dog is licking herself while we're doing the show. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I'm not even sure it's the first time someone's licked themselves while we're doing our show. I, I won't confirm or deny that I've ever licked myself during the show. We are here for a sp- specific reason, and it's not uh, Christmas, even though you do have a Christmas tree. I'm sorry I exposed your dirty little secret, but it is the um, uh, middle of January and you still have your tree up. Well, yeah, my tree stays up till February. That's weird. It's That's not strange. weird. It's not. I mean, it's nice. I like having a uh, tree up for a long time. I thought of leaving mine up, but it, I don't know. It's kind of weird. Unfortunately, half my lights have gone out. Yeah, that happens. And it looks a little sad. We are here for a reason, though. The reason we are here is because... Because Mama had surgery. You had surgery, I did. and you really can't get out. Well, you can, but you shouldn't for a little while. Right. I do have to go to work tomorrow. Though. Yeah, somehow. Now, what do you have to do? Are you on crutches? Are you crutched? I, no, I can put weight on it. So You're that's just going to hobble an issue. around. I'm just going to hobble around. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And everybody will feel sorry for you, which is always a good thing. No, only if they give me drugs or, or money. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> I, don't, I don't have either of those things at this point. Um, I do have an ice pack. Which, Which is, is nice. a good thing. And I have a puppy. Uh, is That's not my ice pack, is it? No, I paid for this ice pack. I have one exactly like that. Mine's much larger than yours, which is probably common for you. Yeah, most people say that. Mm-hmm. Um, I like that ice pack. It's the kind that has little Velcro straps around the leg mm-hmm. and or anything else you want to put it on. And uh, it's really nice. My biggest dip problem is that it tends to go warm too quick. Uh, yeah, I have probably 20 different ice packs mm-hmm. in my freezer right now because mm-hmm. I'm, I'm all about ice therapy. Yeah. And um, unfortunately, I mean, it's good because you use one, you put it back, you grab another one, it's no big deal. Um, I have this one, and then I have one specifically for the knee, which is really nice. Um, but, yeah, it's – they just – they. All, ice therapy is only supposed to be for 20 minutes unless you just had surgery, in which case you kind of always want ice on it. Now, normally while we're doing the show and your dog is in the studio, she's freaking out. She, she's uncontrollable. Here, she's extremely mellow. She's doing what she does at home. She's lying on your couch. Mm-hmm. Her head is on your ankle, and yep. she's a little droopy-eyed. She looks like she's going to fall asleep before the show's over. She will. And she won't be the first to do that. That's true. I think half of our audience does. I mean, sometimes I do. Yeah. But you do tend to wake me up quietly so um, that the audience doesn't know. In order to try to keep me awake, I feel like I should have some beverage. Oh, we should do that. I'm going to go ahead and open this beer. However, I didn't realize until just now it's going to take two hands. I can't do that. So I'm going to put my mic down for un momento. This is sort of a fancy schmancy looking beer. It is in sort of a, um, uh, what do you call it, a um, 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 uh, champagne kind of um, bottle where you have to twist off the little metal thing to get to the cork. And then you, the, you, you twist the cork and it goes like that. And, and then you celebrate your NASCAR victory. Um, which you're you're turning, you're turning, you're turning. That looks familiar. Anyway, um, oh, it's almost, oh, it popped. The cork has popped, and then it is now ready to be drunked. And what are we drinking, by the way? This, Sorry, I, I did I have to say, turn my mic off. That's a lot of freaking beer. It's, it that's is. That's a big thing of this beer. This is more than just a couple of beers. This <laughs> that's is a, huge um, thing. a bottle of beer. Um, and we're drinking. And I can't see to save my life right really? now. Really? Uh-oh. Uh, it's it's Suvi Gold. I think that's how you pronounce it. Suvi, Suvi, Suave. Suvi. Rico Anyways, Suave? it's it's a white wine barrel aged Belgian style golden ale, which in my opinion sounds like heaven. Yeah, almost every word in that I would drink. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna turn my mic off again so I can pour this. And you're gonna it's pour. It's gonna take two hands. Yeah, it takes two hands to pour whatever that's called, and uh, I'll be describing it. It's very light-colored. It's pouring out very quick. She's pouring it to the side. It is now coming out. She almost has a full glass. The glass is starting to full. Not a lot of head on that. Are you pouring me? Sure, I'll pour you. I got to talk. You pour me, I talk. 
She's going to try another glass here, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see if she can better her first one. She's tilting the glass. Here comes the liquid. It is out. It is out. The liquid is out. It is now filling up the glass. The glass is filling up. There's no head almost. It's a nice little kind of amber color. A little bit. Whoa, whoa. Interesting. Look at that. Equal amounts. And didn't spill a drop. That's professional pouring. At its best. I am the best pourer on the planet. All right. So uh, this is sort of a cloudy little uh, goldy it's liquid. a belgian white yeah pale. it's gold color and cloudy and and it's pretty it smells kind of nice this you just said you wanted some pizza mm -hmm. this smells like a pizza beer it does oh my god sorry. let's order a pizza <laughs> sorry. You just damn it sorry you made me i forgot about I can't the fact have that i, I want a whole pizza, thing of soup my wife and makes now soup I want today pizza. And I feel bad wanting pizza because your wife did send some beautiful soup over uh -huh. so that I can, you know, have food during my healing process. But I just really want a fucking pizza. Okay. So, mm, I might order one and have you go grab it. Anyways. The hell? Why don't you have them deliver? That's well, they, they will. But, I, but you still have to go grab it because oh, they don't deliver downstairs. to my door. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so. Yeah, I might do that. I am going to sniff my beer. Um. Okay. And I'm going to drink it. Tell us what you think, because you're drinking yours now. Not sure. Toffee? No. She wants some beer. No. No beer. Um, okay. Not sure what to think yet. All right. All right. <laughs> it's interesting. Yeah. It's not what I thought it would be. Me either. Um, it's actually, I mean, it's so far I like it. It's not a bad thing. I will tell you that it is oh dear god i can't see that <laughs> is that I the name so of the beer old. do you know how old i am people you need to really pay attention to how old i am when i try and read these beer bottles with their tiny little font so we were at a pizza place the other day and um a song came on which was really cool uh-huh i can't i'm sorry I, i'm not gonna be able to remember the song or the band because you're also old and it came on, and we both liked it. My wife and I liked it, and she, and she was like, "Shazam this song!" And so I put, I got Shazam on, and so I got, I was like, "Oh, this looks like a cool band. Let's remember the band because we both liked it." Mm -hmm. And when I got home, I looked it up and I started playing it. The album was recorded the same year my wife was born. So it was a while back. <laughs> it's an old album. Okay. Yeah. Um, that surprised me a little bit. So I, I turned my light on my phone so I could read the font on the on the beer bottle. And oh, yeah. It is 9.6%. Oh, I'll be, I'll be feeling a little good. Hey, I've got some uh, trivia here. You you have trivia for me? Mm-hmm. What kind of trivia? Like, am I going to be embarrassed? Well, okay. First of all, let me clarify. We usually do Zopmondo, and, and we're going to do a form of Zopmondo, I think. Here in we? a minute. Would yeah. you like to do it now? No, I'm going to do this now. Okay. Fine. I already looked it up. Whatever. I have seven facts about surgery oh. that I wanted to throw out. Um, since I know you just, them all. I just had surgery. I know you just had surgery, so I don't know. I think you might be a part of this. South Africa had the world's first successful penis transplant in 2014. The surgery took nine hours. If your surgery lasts longer than nine hours, consult your doctor. You know, here's the thing. If I was going to... If I was, what does penis surgery in Africa have to do with my knee? I don't know. I'm just curious. I just know that if I'm going to get a penis transplant, I'm going to Africa. No, go to Thailand. I, I'm just saying. I'm I don't you, know why. I, I have people that have gone to Thailand to I get penis transplants. I feel like I would go to Africa for uh, a penis transplant. Thailand, all day long. It might not be my number one choice. Okay. In the USA, cataract surgery is the most common procedure in the USA. Could you, would you think that? Cataract surgery? Yeah. I don't think that has anything to do with cars, does it? No. Um, three million cases a year. Well, yeah, because eyes go bad. Yeah. yeah. Like yours is going bad. They are very, going very bad. Uh, in Pakistan, 2,000 renal transplants. You know what that is, don't you? Kidney? It is. Okay. Uh, are performed annually with 75% on foreigners. Why are foreigners having kidney transplants in Pakistan? So they go to Pakistan and then they need kidney transplants. I guess maybe after the water get there? could be the bad water or something. I don't know. Could be. In Western Europe, it's the region with the largest number of heart transplants. Western, Western Europe. Europe. Yeah. Is that because they're good at it, they or is that because have people heart. have bad they have hearts? Bad hearts there. They have bad hearts. Yeah. Okay. And Australia, twenty-eight thousand surgeries per one hundred thousand people. 
It's one of the highest rates in the world. So do th- okay. So they just like give out surgery like candy. Is it's what kind you're of like that. Everybody has to have some sort of surgery. It doesn't say what type of surgery that they have. But surgery, I mean, it's like the surgery capital of the world. They put the word surgery on so many different procedures that we here in the United States could probably just call procedures, mm-hmm. but they're called surgeries. I mean, what, okay, what defines, what's the difference between a procedure and surgery? I don't know. It, co- cutting open the skin and going inside would be surgery, I think. But Anything I've you got to pr- sew it up and whatever. I know. I've had procedures where they had to give me stitches afterwards, but it wasn't su- surgery. I've had something lanced. I think per- procedures and surgery sometimes are the same thing. Okay. Just, um, you know, a surgery is not always a procedure, and a procedure is not always a surgery, but sometimes it's the same thing. So Toffee wants to eat your iPad. I know. Okay. Um, one in ten. One in ten is your chance of being subjected to an error in the hospital. My question to you is, yeah. I want to know, remember that episode we had where we talked about people doing unauthorized... Um, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, um, yeah. Like, like exams Exams and stuff. on you, mm-hmm. yeah. Do you, know the, do you know if they did that? I can guarantee you they did not. How can you guarantee you were asleep? Well, for a number of reasons. A, uh, one of the things that we discussed when we talked about that is that's normally happening at teaching schools where you mm. have a room full of... Uh, students. Okay. Uh, this is specifically a surgery center where yeah. they kind of bring you in and out like cattle to get the surgeries done. A lot of times. They don't have time for that shit. A lot of times cattle have examinations. I know no, that. No. I, did you just call me cattle? Oh, no, I, I'm not saying. I'm just saying. You said okay. you didn't have an examination, so no. But if you had, maybe. All right. So one in ten is your chances of being subjected to an error in the hospital. One in 300 is your chance of dying Due to an error in healthcare. Oh sure. Can you believe I, that? I do. I do. All right. Surgical errors. Now these are these are the most common surgical errors. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring them up to you right now. All right. Let's hear them. And some of these I can't even believe. Number one, operating on the wrong patient. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what? Mm-hmm. They wheel the wrong person in. The, the doctor didn't know. They're just the surgeon. They, you know, you wheel somebody in. They're just gonna dig into your knee and do what they need to do. They're not necessarily looking at your face yeah i i seem like like sometime last year i read the story where somebody was having a penis removed because of gangrene or something like that and they they took the wrong person but what did you think though in a situation like that that the that the surgeon would look at the penis yes and say this does not look like a gangrene penis why am i removing it i i think could just been pissed off all right um also, uh, surgical error, uh, performing the wrong procedure, which is what we just talked about. Sure. Um, leaving surgical equipment behind inside you. Oh, I've heard horror stories about that. I, and they've got a picture of a scalpel, but I would think it's mostly like sponges and gauze. Probably, and probably more, more material objects like that, like a sponge mm-hmm. or some gauze. Um, operating on the wrong side of the patient. This you know, is common. They mark on it usually. Like while you're awake, they'll mark on you and they'll be like, this is the one we're working on. Like they, they mark, like I had a colonoscopy. They like, they drew a picture of my butt. No, I, no you only did. have one butthole. So it's not like you they could know. go in a second butthole. But my, my surgeon did come in and see me before I was even in the operating room and say hi. You wrap some duct tape around your knee, like fluorescent duct tape around No, the he signed knee. the knee and put a, <laughs> yeah. a smiley face on it. Oh, it's a so good thing you weren't he, going for a gynecological surgery. Cool, yeah, because then I'd have a pretty would, picture on my... That's right. He would be mm-hmm. signing his name there. Mm-hmm. Oh, there was a doctor who did that. Um... Another error, puncturing nerves or organs. Puncturing. Yeah, I mean, accidents happen. Oops. Oops. Yeah. What are you going to do? Fix it. That How about happened, fix it? That happened be- to me while I had my colonoscopy. What did they puncture? My butt. I punctured it. Um, all right. And then <laughs> failure to get informed consent. I think that probably happens a lot, but that seems so careless. That just seems really careless. Like, yeah. who isn't consenting to surgery before they go under for surgery? Did you know that South Korea is the plastic surgery capital of the world? 20 it, procedures per 1,000 people. Is it because they want to look like North Koreans? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. What do North Koreans look like? They could, if they could do that at a barber. Wow. Just go get the haircut. Wow. <laughs> okay. 
I'm just saying, Kim Jong Il's haircut. Kim Jong Un. What's which one is it? That one guy. That one guy. Yeah. He's got the, yeah. The bowl cut. Mm -hmm. That's not a North Korean or South Korean thing. That's just that dude. That's just him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, One percent of people remain conscious during the operation. Okay, so I where general anesthesia was provided. I have to tell you a quick story. Mm. So, I am fine with surgery. I've had surgery a number of times. Mm -hmm. I'm not. It's not. I'm not afraid of it yeah i've never been afraid of surgical or medical procedures of any kind so i go in and this is mind you this is a what hour and a half long procedure at most so i go in and i'm all prepped and the first nurse she comes in well i'll tell you about that later but right before i'm about to go under they've already got they've already injected the the uh fentanyl right just to kind of chill me out a little bit. Mm-hmm. And uh, Dr. Lester comes in with the actual tube of white yumminess, which will knock you out. Oh. And, and that, that shouldn't sound dirty. No. But it does. And I apologize. Yeah. Um, That's what got Michael Jackson. <laughs> so the, I hear Shane, my anesthesiology technician, tell mm-hmm. the anesthesiologist I have given her whatever fluids of of fentanyl and he says okay great and then i just i blurted out i'm suddenly scared Uh uh-oh my brain just went insane for like a second and all of a sudden every story i've ever heard of anybody ever feeling a procedure and yet not being able to move during the procedure like a coma like you're in that flooded into my mind yeah yeah i had i had i was like Wait a second. Hang hang on just a second. I hold up. Uh yeah. So I I voiced that feeling to them and they said, "Trust me, you're not going to feel any." I'm like, "I do. I mean, I do as much as I can." But I still have this fear. And then the next thing I knew, I woke up in the recovery room. I had a, a kind of a similar experience when I was going in for my little procedure. And um, I don't like any of that stuff. I, can't, I don't like surgery. I don't like being prodded. I don't like being poked. I don't like any of that. And I don't like being put to sleep. Okay. I don't like it at all. Yeah, and we discussed that once upon a time. Yes. I, uh, I almost left. I almost, I had to do all of this. I had to do some meditation. I really had to psych myself out. But I almost got up and left. Wow. Yeah. Just for a colonoscopy. <laughs> yes. And they're not like cutting into anything. No, they're just burrowing. Yeah. At that point. I mean, there's some people who like that wide awake, but that's not me. I just, I couldn't do the sleep stuff, and so. Uh, but anyway, it came out fine. Okay, well, one more it went factoid. In fine. Okay. One more ahead. factoid. Mm-hmm. The longest surgery ever took place in 2001. It took a team of 20 doctors at the Singapore General Hospital four days. To separate conjoined twins at the head. So they were four they were days. under for four days? I guess they were under. I mean, or did they come in and out of anesthesia? I don't know, because sometimes, you know, they'll do brain surgery while you're wide awake. Because they say True. there's no pain. But True. I don't know. I really don't know. But four days. And if they Ugh. were conjoined twins, I imagine they were young if they had chosen to be separated. Especially uh, conjoined at the head. Uh-huh. I, I, I think it. that would be a decision you would make early in yeah. life. I wonder if they're still separated. I mean, I'm, I wonder how the... If they're still separated? Well, you mean, I mean they chose to get reconjoined? Yeah, they were like, it's kind of like circumcision. They're like, like, I, no, want, it, I, want, I want, it want this back. I want it back. No, I just meant I, like one died or something. Oh, like, you know, oh. Or still alive or whatever. Oh, yeah. maybe. Hmm. Anyway, those are some facts about surgery. I didn't know if... I wanted to wait until after you had the surgery. Some of those you don't want to talk about. Before you go into the surgery. Oh, I'm well aware. I, you, kn- you know me. I, I look all the horrible stuff up, and mm. I, I watch all the horrible programs, yeah. and I, I know all you the horrible to get things. This, you were trying to get me to look at pictures of your knee, and I don't want to. I you don't. wouldn't even look. I don't look at that stuff. I, that's disgusting. It's not. There's I no blood. Even, I don't even want to see your knee before surgery. Fuck you. <laughs> I don't want to look at that. I'm going to show you my scars as no. soon as we're done here. I don't, I'm going to take look. my pants off. I will not look. And I'm going to show you the stitches. I will not look. That are sticking out of the two nope. tiny incisions. I've never looked when you took your knee. pants off, and I'm not going to start now. <laughs> <laughs> Just not going to do it. <laughs> right. Sorry. Oh, it's fine. Because you're you're not lying. You're not wrong. Um, 
so the pictures that I do have, though, I would like you to look at them no. and tell no. me if you can decipher what is what. No, I'm not going to look at them. But there's it, they're black and white. There's I don't no care. blood. There's no veins. I don't care if it's there's a courtroom sketch. That. I'm not going to look at it. I don't, I don't understand. Want to see it. I, I don't, don't understand. I don't want to. I don't like that. I don't want to see it. Okay. It's not my kind of thing. Well, I, I'm I'm grateful that they sent them home with me because I like to I like well, to show things like that off. I'm surprised you don't frame it and hang it up. I'm, you probably I might. will. I'm sure you will. As a matter of fact, I'd like to commission a piece. No. I would like you to draw the inside of my knee. No. Based on the images that I have. I'd like for you to draw the inside of my butt. Based on the images that you have? <laughs> That's right, I'll bring it over. Okay. I will draw your rectum. Rectum. You, I barely knew him. <laughs> Wait, that's not the right joke. All right, speaking of jokes, let's do a little, uh, what are we going to call it? We're not doing Zabando. No, right now we're just would doing you Would You Rather, rather? like would we did rather. at the restaurant the other Yeah, night. I think we're going to always call it Would You Rather. All right. Zabando, I think we might get sued for using that term. Okay, so this is a this is a pretty pretty good question. Now, am I supposed to read one for you, or are you just reading yeah, one Yeah, I have a, a number of them here, so you can scroll up and down, but I'm, gonna, I'm just going to ask, ask you this top one. All right. All right, Rick. Mm-hmm. Would you rather the general public think you are a horrible person, mm-hmm. but your family be very proud of you? It's pretty close to the truth. Or your family think you are a horrible person, but the general public be very proud of you? Yeah. I think yeah, that could go either way. I think I would go with B, but I don't, I don't know. I, it doesn't really. Give me some me. context. I, I mean, it's, this would be the general public. So people just yeah, I mean, out, I I out on ha- the street would mm. think Rick Baldwin is an awesome I guy. I don't spend a lot of time hanging around my family. They don't live close by. So uh-huh. I'm, I spend a lot more time with the general public. So I would kind of rather the general public not think I'm an asshole. I mean, that's true. Yeah. I okay. mean, you know. So that's... you have to come and get this because I can't bring it to you because I'm injured. Uh, and so. I... You I'm supposed just, to read this? Just find a, a question there that, that you'd like to ask me. <laughs> That's an interesting one. All right, what you got? I'm trying to find one that has something to do with sex. Don't drink my beer, dog. She's not going to drink your beer. I put it on the floor and she immediately got up. She's not allowed. I'm she knows she's underage. Again. All right, would you rather be the first person to explore a planet or be the inventor of a drug that cures a disease, a deadly disease. I would rather be the first person to explore a planet. Fuck other people. Damn I want to go to a planet. Damn it, planet. That's, that's I love you. Kind of how I feel about it. Um, I mean, not really. But uh, I mean, that's my answer, though. Yes, okay. I would rather be the first person to explore a planet than to, you know, develop a life-saving drug. Don't forget to bring the potatoes. Well, yeah, because otherwise, how are you going to survive? I know. That's the only thing that's going to grow on Mars. All right. Well, here we are. This is kind of a weird show, and we apologize. But, you know, sometimes we do weird shows. Um, we got some decent feedback for the show. Oh, we always appreciate when people leave comments. Yeah. And uh, reviews. And one thanks. of our clients. Or one of our clients. Our client. One of our clients. <laughs> clients. How about one of our listeners yeah. uh, left a pretty, pretty, pretty nice review for it's about us. about you know, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah a friend of mine. Coworker. Uh-huh. Um, and so, yeah, and some other things too. And so it's always fun when we know someone's listening because mm-hmm. we never know. Cause I rarely and think listening. anybody's listening. Like I rarely think that like oftentimes I think it's just an excuse for you and I to talk and, and that's what we do and point things at our we mouths just while we do it and record. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, um, I got a question or a topic. Do you have a topic? You want to talk about something in particular? I really, honestly, for the last four days, my mind has been muddled with drugs and you have surgery, a mind. and I don't have a lot going on in my life um, other than like repetitive television and naps at this I, point. And so I, I want to kind of talk a little bit about what I, some things I've been thinking about this week. About let me ask you a question first: How many things do you do regularly on a regular basis that you have actual, absolutely no foundation in? Um, I need more sense? context. I need more context <laughs> Were you, than that. Okay. Um, let me see if I could figure out <clears throat> whether hobbies or even jobs. Okay. Even job um, that you you are do. Oh, well, okay. Let me back up. My, Please. 
my uh, job, I'm an artist. Mm -hmm. That's what I do. Mm -hmm. Professional artist. Mm -hmm. Made a living as an artist most of my life. Mm, kind of. Yeah. What do you mean kind of? <laughs> made a living. I mean, with quotes. But yeah. Oh, so you're making fun of making a living. No, I've made a living. I'm still living uh, as an artist. Okay. I have no training in that. I, zero almost. Mm -hmm. Maybe I've had like four classes in art sure. my whole life. Mm -hmm. But nothing really like, you know, for what I'm doing now. So I have no foundation in art. I, I don't know the basics. I don't know the principles of right, art. Right, right, right. But yet I make a living out of it. It's not like you have a master's in it's what art I do. drawing. So that's my question to you. How many things do you do? And are you doing that you have no foundation to do? Pretty much everything. That's, that's my <laughs> life as well. I, I mean, I think that's pretty much everybody's life because even in this day and age, if you go to college, let's say you go to school and you go for four years and you get a degree mm -hmm. um, anymore, unless, you're, unless your degree is in something like history or anthropology or Greek mythology or something that isn't going to change anytime soon. Uh, by the time you're done by with your degree, what you learned in your first year is obsolete because yeah. things move so quickly these days that there's no, it's almost like most of the, most of the people that I hire and I work at a tech company. So most of the people that I hire and they come in and they say, I have, I have a degree and I'm like, okay, so you're walking in off the street is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I mean, cause that's, that's basically, yeah. That's that's what you're doing. You come to me and you say, I just passed three certifications. And I'm like, you're my guy because you just passed them. So you just learned the most up to date information. So certifications are 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 more valid in this day and age, at least in my field, than a degree. Yeah. And yet you still find these um, job opportunities out there that require these degrees. And I'm like, why? Well, especially I, if you want a four year degree plus some experience. So let's say four years experience. Now that degree is essentially four years old at most or at least and eight years old at best. So that that degree is obsolete at this point. I, I, I'm not necessarily talking about a degree, though, because when you're saying certification, that's a foundation. You can be cert when you get certified. You're learning things about your job. You're learning principles. Sure. And if you are an attorney, mm -hmm. you have to go to law school. Well, they won't. They won't yeah. let you practice without a law degree. They won't let you practice unless you've been to law school. But you also have to have X amount of regular seminars and certifications to constantly update yourself on what's going on in the law. So. That's essentially like a school. I yeah, mean, you are you, learning foundation that way. You have to have a certain amount of hours of continued education because things change. But if I'm doing art, no, one, there's nobody anywhere that comes up to me and says, "Sir, sir, I have to see your qualifications for being able to draw this." That's true. There are certain things, and it's, and I would say most things that you don't have to have. You could be a chef and never go to chef school. No one checks on that. You have to pass. Um, you know, certain health regulations in mm -hmm. order to cook in a kitchen for public. But you you could be anybody and just learn how to make grilled cheese and the next thing you know, you're making a souffle. Well, just I mean... Just learning in the kitchen. You're getting, you know, some practical experience. No, you're but, right. You're right. Because like I said, with the certs and the, the degrees and what have you in a tech industry, I, I don't have either of those. Yeah. I, I'm self-taught. That's the way I am. And almost everything I do, I'm self-taught. But... Mm -hmm. And so I've always, I won't say always, but I've resisted the foundations in my f chosen field, in my art field. And other things that I do, even, and if I just say photography, if I'm a photographer, I just take pictures. Mm -hmm. I know certain things about photography, but I've never been, I've never had a photography class, never been to photography school. I have. <laughs> I know. So, um, but I don't have the foundations. And I was just thinking uh, this week and the, really the last couple of weeks. How many things that I do and get by with in my life where I don't have any foundations? And I feel like that a lot of things in my life, I've come to a wall or come to a ceiling where I can't go farther than where I am. 
Okay, because you don't have some sort of credential? Well, not credentials, but I don't have a certain knowledge. Like I've always, like I'm not a painter. I can't, I can't buy oil paints and a canvas and sit down and paint a portrait. Yes, you can. No, I can't. It just won't be very good. It, but it won't, I don't understand principles of color. Mm-hmm. I don't understand uh, necessarily. There's Now, I've learned some principles of color. I've learned some structures of face. Mm-hmm. You know, to do a portrait. But ultimately, I don't have art school training. I don't have the basics that you need to do that kind of stuff. Um, and so being self-taught, I, I learn what I need to learn. Mm-hmm. But I come to these points regularly throughout my life where I, I have gaps that I can't move forward. So are you saying that you're looking into art school? Well... Um, that is something that I thought even this week. I was I started thinking maybe I should go to art school. Why mm-hmm. not? Why not go to art school? Mm-hmm. And there's some reasons why I decided that I'm not going to do that. Uh, financial but I do, mostly? No, no. It's time. Like I'm. Uh, I, oh, I'm not sixty, but I'm I'm moving towards sixty. You're close. Not that close, but I'm getting in. I'm that. I'm on the other side of it. Mm-hmm. You know. So just like what is what would going to school do to change my life and really not nothing, but what would change my life is knowing some things. So, like I would benefit from taking classes in painting and drawing and photography. Rather Fundamentals. Than, yeah, yeah. Rather absolutely. than going to school, because if I go back to school, mm-hmm. I have to have language. I have to have math. I don't want to go through those classes again. No, I already you don't. did that. Yeah, you did. I'm too old to do that. Yeah. So I just, you know, so I kind of, I really toyed around with the idea of going back to school. But I guess my point being is I've survived so long with no foundation in my life for what I'm doing mm-hmm. in many, many things. And I, I'm just now at this advanced age starting to realize how important those foundations are. And I'm starting to look back and going, wow. I need to really get into the principles of uh, anatomy and structures in the face and things like that. Rather than just relying on what I've known my whole life, Yeah, I need to find out what the masters have done. What You know, I need to, at my age, I have to go back and learn what kids are learning at 18, 19, 20 in college. So what you're telling me is that those little anatomy dolls that you have around your art studio, they're that's, just there for fun? That's just a personal thing for me. I oh, okay. I'd rather not talk about it on, them. on yeah. the podcast. Okay. But mm. No, I just, I just, I feel like I'm just kind of at a point now in my life where it's just like I'm realizing how important that foundations of my, of many things that I do are. Yeah. So even like I do a lot of caricatures. I've been working on some caricatures and they're great but you'd say they're great but to me it's just like there's something lacking in them there's something that's not right and i know that what's not right about it like i know where i am and i know what i'm doing but i don't have some foundations that would make it really really good Mm -hmm. so that's what i'm trying to do is now i've decided to kind of go back and check into the foundations okay okay Huh. So foundations. I think that uh, in my daily life, pretty much everything I do has zero foundation. I don't know that's true. You okay? Yeah, I'm good. Other than, um, other than maybe like relationships, but but or are you supposed to go get a degree in in your relationships? No, but I think the reason why I brought this up because I, I think it's applicable to everyone. I think a lot of times we all kind of coast on where we are, where we've been, what we've done. Mm -hmm. And rarely do we ever stop and think about what are the structures that should be keeping us there? Or what are the structures that we could learn that could make what we do better? And if it's computer repair, if it's computer illustration, or if it's computer design... Sure. um, there are certain things that if you're that you might be able to learn just because of talent or exposure you could be you know you could you know my brother is a mortician and he started off in high school working as an apprentice at a mortician cleaning up and mowing the grass and things mm-hmm, like that mm-hmm. and while he was there he started learning little things about mortuary science to the point where he really began to like it so he went to school but he and and that's 
kind of one of those things that you can't do without going to school and get a license. But but I'm just saying that there's a lot of I time. mean, you could. You just wouldn't be able to do it legally. That's because right. Because there are legalities around that. Right. You would mm-hmm. have to do it in a really dark garage somewhere. Which is fine. But I just think that a lot of people like you or um, I, you could be, I mean, there are people who might be in positions at a bank that don't have degrees in or, or finance or don't know well, certain sure. things. Yeah. But they but their their knowledge and their experience is valuable and got them where they are. Mm-hmm. Um some people say that politics that you don't need any experience in politics. There are some people who have law degrees and a degree in in um um political science or whatever. And then there are some people who have no Experience at all, but and 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 in, in those in those types of of uh, occupations, uh, political science, politics, politics, um, uh, advertising, marketing, you know those kinds of things. You're you're going to learn that kind of stuff on the fly. A lot of times, when you're talking about medicine or mortuary science mm-hmm. or whatever, you have to know the fundamentals. Yes, and those things have to be taught. Now. Where you're coming from as an artist, a lot of what artists do is learned on the fly, and it's new, and it's changing, and it's constantly evolving. But if you don't have the fundamentals and the basics, sometimes you can't put on paper what you want to put on paper. That's exactly it. So, so there is it's it's almost it's almost. Um, uh, the word I'm looking for. It's almost. I can't even. I can't even. I'm on drugs. Well, the I'm way sorry. I look at it is, and this is what I was saying to my wife. It's just like I am, um, like from A to Z. Let's say I am in the middle of the alphabet. I'm all the way down here at right, right, right. M in P, right, whatever. But you don't know A, B, and C. I don't know A, B, and C, but I'm way up here. So someone who's just going to art school. They're not where I am. They can't do what you do. They're down here right. at A, B, and C. So they've got to learn that, and then they're mm-hmm. going to keep going. Then they go all the way down the alphabet. Mm-hmm. I've already been down the alphabet because of my experience, because of some talent, just because of life experience. But you'll probably stop somewhere around R because without A, B, and C, you can't get to Z. I don't know that that's necessarily true, but for me, I'm there, and I'm 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 at a point of sort of frustration where I just feel like I... I see some things that are lacking, and those things that are lacking are the foundations. And you can equate it to building a building. You know, you could have the most talented carpenter in the world, but I don't know that you would necessarily want to live in a house unless they knew the principles of building, if they knew the principles of, of designing a house, because the house could fall down on your head. Yeah. Even if they're just a brilliant carpenter or a brilliant um, um Mason or a brilliant. A designer whatever. can make your house look beautiful, but it's going to fall down tomorrow if they're not if they don't have the. Yeah, the so I just feel like that for me, and I guess that was what I wanted to talk about was how many things in your life are you doing that require no foundation necessarily that you're doing and you're doing without the foundation, and how much can you make it better? Could you make it better by going back and digging in and getting into the foundation? So. That's my commitment. That's sort of what I'm doing now is I've just I really made a commitment to go back. So I'm now learning all these principles of, you know, portraiture and art, boring stuff that I just didn't really want to do. But when I'm even though I consider it boring, it's stuff that I'm like, holy crap, that's what I needed in my caricature. That's what I needed to know that I didn't know. It, it's actually true for both of us right now because just recently, like in the last couple of weeks, I just got a pretty good review at work. Uh huh. And um, that came with a raise, mm-hmm. but it also came with some stipulations. You didn't take off your pants and show them your knee, did you? Not recently. Okay. I mean, that was a while back. What does that have to do with anything? I'm just saying it could have something to do with the review, but I don't know. All right. So, um, Anyways, uh, based on that review, I do have some things that I could be better at. Like my lowest marks on my review are the fact that I I don't have any certs. Yeah. So um, if I'm going to do better in mm-hmm. future, one of the things is that I have to have a better fundamental uh, knowledge of of the. Are you interested in that though? I mean, 
because for years I haven't been. And I'm just now at the point where I'm just, I guess I feel like I've gone as far as I could and knowing these foundations would actually send me farther forward. So to oh, me, it's kind absolutely. of exciting. It's just like, oh, wow, this is like the fuel I need to make my stuff better. I know yeah. full well that by going back and getting those certifications and learning those fundamentals will absolutely make me a better technician. It will also make me a better teacher. It will make me a better supervisor in that um, I can help technicians that may not have that background. Absolutely. I'm well aware of that. Now, you asked me, am I excited about that? And is that something I want to do? Uh -huh. I still don't know if this is the field I want to be in. Really? I still don't. At your age, you don't know that you, it's like you don't know what you want to be when you grow up. Nope. Interesting. Not at all. Do you? Um, I mean, you've known you're an artist from the day you were born. I, I have But recently, what you want to do with that. Well, we had this talk where I was like trying to figure out what else I could do. Like I was thinking real estate, things like that. I'm, I, I want to be an artist. I like being an artist. I'll be an artist in my life. I would like to have another <laughs> source of income. Well, yeah, but everybody would. Yeah, but I mean, you know, because sometimes, you know, artist work is great. Sometimes not so great. So during the times when it's not so great, it'd be nice to just have a regular... But there are other things I enjoy doing. And that's the weird thing. It's just like a lot of things that I enjoy doing. Podcasting. Well, that's not fair because I did go to school for communication. So That's true. Um, I have a ba And that's the thing. I have a background in theater. Like, here's the other thing. I've been asked by several people to teach art classes. And I was just like, I don't know how to teach art. No? I just do it. I couldn't teach them what I do because I just do it. And that's because I don't have that foundation. If but you I could teach theater. I have a foundation in theater, but I don't. I don't do it. So it's just like I could teach acting. I could teach mm, directing, maybe even. directing, um, in in theater design and stuff. But um, but I don't actually do that. But I couldn't teach art because I don't have those foundations. Exactly. It's just art is something you do uh, by by feeling and well, by it's, instinct. It's it's. I mean, I've had the most training doing it. It's a natural ability that I've had. And then, uh, obviously, that I've honed my skills. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've sharpened them. I've gotten better at everything that I do because I do it. So, I mean, I have skills doing it, and I have um, practical experience, but I just don't have that foundation. Now, I mean, you know, even with that. So, like, my school now is YouTube. I spend hours and hours and hours on YouTube lear learning the foundations, learning how to mix colors, learning how to structure a body, sure. learning how, that's fun, learning how to, can be, because I paint, you know, I do mural painting, but I'm always interested in better ways of doing it. Mm -hmm. I look at, you know, how to use the tools better and things like that. Like, you know, I just got into charcoal painting. I've never worked with charcoal before, ever. You have. I mean, you have. No. You've tried. No. But you never really got into it. I never really You've tried. touched it. I've touched it. <laughs> you touched it. I touched ah, it, but I've never touched it. I mean, just touching it. I've, I've, I've touched a car, but I can't build a car. Right. I mean, I'm just saying it's not a tool that I've ever used. It's not anything that I've ever gotten into. It's nothing. I mean, I've done some abstracts where I've used some charcoal in it, mm -hmm. but I've never, I've never used it to draw. It's just not something that I've ever been interested in. Mm -hmm. And suddenly, I am. But it's something that's scary because I don't know how to do it. So I'm I'm going back and learning a lot of the fundamentals. And I guess the only reason it I'm not saying I didn't bring this up to kind of talk about me necessarily. I just kind of wanted. Well, yeah, you did. You always no, talk about you. I wanted to talk about other people and our listeners about to kind of examine your own life and what you do every day that might be made better by going back and finding out the fundamentals. Because I could do that with photography. I do photographs. And I've done a lot of, of fundamental work with photography. But I, I could do better by going to a class. Mm -hmm. I'd write some poetry and just learning a, you know, more about poetry writing and things like that. So just fundamentals. No matter what you do at your job, how could you make it better by learning the fundamentals? Or just your life. Like you were saying, relationships. There are some fundamentals of relationships we can all benefit from. And none of us will ever, ever learn. No. I won't learn. No, I won't. All right. So I'm wrapping it up. That's okay. All. I'm not going to say anymore. We're going to have to wrap it up because... You're getting tired? I'm I'm hurting, and I need to go take my drugs, and I'm already out of it. Mm -hmm. So if I take more drugs, um, 
I'll be more out of it. All right. Well, I have I have a news. Don't story. tell anybody I'm having a beer while I'm on drugs. I'm not. Uh, okay. I do have a news story. I want to talk about this news story really quick, and then we can wrap it up. All um, right. Sixty-three-year-old Vietnamese woman. You were talking about Vietnam, weren't you? <clears throat> was I get a new penis in Vietnam or no, Thailand? It was Thailand. Thailand. They're all the same. Anyway, no, sixty-three-year-old. Oh <laughs> what? No, you did. It not. was a joke. Can I even uh, joke about the Asians? They're uh, always so sensitive. Anyway, a 63-year-old <laughs> Vietnamese woman who recently underwent a laparoscopic laparoscopic lapar- laparoscopic procedure to have a tumor removed from her throat was shocked to hear that the doctors removed a six-inch leech from oh. her throat instead. Oh. No. Parasite had reportedly been living uh, in the woman's throat for about three months. Uh, yuck. <sighs> okay, so I saw on YouTube one time, mm-hmm. I saw this woman who thought that she had something like like a, a cyst or something in her uh, nose. And they, they pulled a leech out of her oh, sinus. Oh, yeah. And it was like three inches long. Oh, no. And it was out of her nose. Oh, nose they leeches are hard. Yeah. The Ooh. unnamed woman from Vietnam Mountains, Ha Giang Province, had been complaining about severe headaches, frequent nasal congestion, and a constant sensation of mucus fluid flowing down the throat for several weeks. If you have those symptoms, see your leech doctor. It's probably a leech. Uh, she eventually checked into a local hospital where ENT, ear, nose, and throat specialists, performed various tests and discovered an unidentified mass in her throat. What the heck is that? It's a leech. The woman was scheduled for laparoscopic surgery to have the mass believed to be a tumor removed. But during the procedure, doctors were shocked. What the hell? To find out a live leech was attached to the woman's throat and I'm going to show you a picture right here. Okay, so you're going to show me a picture There's of the, the leech. There's a live leech right there. Right but there. I can't show you a picture of the inside of my knee. No. Uh, anyway, uh, and so, you know, they don't know how it got there, but they got it removed, and the woman is leech-free. So that's the story. Interesting. That's the story. Next time you're, um, Mm. having a little headache and some nasal drippage, um... Got some post-nasal drip Consider the leech option. Consider the leech. I think a lot of times in, um, some remote and rural areas of this world, including in the United States, people go... Swimming in lakes and creeks and rivers, and little creatures crawl up in crevices, enter into your orifices, yes, and lay some eggs or yes. just decide to have a little party. Just crawl up in there and they're like, Oh, this is cozy. And then next thing you know, you're having some headaches mm. and you go to the doctor or a butt itch. Yeah, yeah. Do you ever wonder? It's like the other day, I felt something, I was asleep, I felt something, and sleeping and i just woke up and there's a cat ass in my face well that's just peanut being peanut it wasn't peanut but it was in my face and i was just like how many times have, have those cats sat on my face while i've been asleep so many times and i don't know about it and then i think what how many times have a little spider crawled up into my nose uh-huh. while i've been asleep uh-huh. or in my ear or even worse than that, what if it was one of those like centipedes? Yes. Or yes. a roach. Yes. And like we a don't baby know. roach. We don't know. Or something that crawls up in your nose because it's warm mm-hmm. and cozy in there. And decides to make a house, mm-hmm. make a life for themselves. Mm-hmm. Or in your ear. In my nasal Like cavity. an earwig. Yes. Yeah. All up in your ear. All right, people. Just so you know. Take care of your orifices. Plug them up. Crevices. If you All right, let's uh, wrap up this podcast. We we did everything we needed to do, right? I think so, because I'm name? not ready for bed. <laughs> Dog's asleep. You're ready to go to sleep. You going to order a pizza? No. Probably not. Order. No, I'm just going to sleep. You have soup. All right, so uh, let's talk about the beer. What do you think? What's the beer again? What beer are we drinking? It's If I'm pronouncing it properly, which mm. I know I'm not, Okay. it's uh, Cuvée Gold. It's by Hardywood. Cuvée? 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 I don't know. Can Shut up. Can it's, I see it? Uh, can I see up. the cover? Oh, you, can I see it? Is that what you said? Can I see it? Uh, yeah. I don't know. Cueve? Cueve? It's C-U-V-E like, with a little dink and E uh-huh. gold. And yeah. it's a white wine barrel aged Belgian style gold nail, which Belgian style gold nail is one of my favorites. You put it in a white wine barrel and I'm happy. I got to tell you, I don't taste the wine or the barrel. What do you taste? Just the other stuff. <laughs> Just the beer? Yeah. So you don't think it has that teensy tiny little... Mm -mm. Nope. 
do. I, uh, I, I will, uh, I will come out and say I'm not a fan of it. Not my favorite beer I'm I've had. Out. It's um, uh, a little, just regular, normal. Um, the taste. I will say it almost. It leans to a sour. It's, it's leaning and that I direction. Kinda, I kind of like that yeah. part of it, but yeah. overall, it's just sort of a basic beer. Um, for a pizza, it might be kind of good. Oh, I'm just going to throw this out. I shouldn't mix my reviews, but um, I had pizza the other night. Had a beer, so good. We need to review it on the show. We'll talk about it anyway. Um, wow, you just threw that out there, so everybody I, could go. Um, you know what? me. If I didn't say it, I would forget it. Yep. So I, it's not my favorite. I I don't know what you think, but what do you think? Well, it's a good thing it costs twenty bucks. It's just twenty so bucks. You know. wow. Yeah. It's like a whole six pack. It's yeah. two six packs for the beer I drink. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think? I I I like it. Mm-hmm. I'd like to try it again when I'm not high. Oh, I think that it's okay, but just I mean I'm not saying I've had it's it's just kind of to me it just tastes like a regular beer. Lit. Uh, I don't say it's a little bitter, but no, I just it's not my favorite. Okay. I'm gonna give it a two five two point five. Yeah. Is that what you're giving it to? Same. Wow, I thought you said you liked it. I do. Same. But, I mean, I just because I like it doesn't mean I like it. Okay. Maybe but like just because I like it doesn't mean I like it. All right, so we're both saying 2.5. Anyway, that's the beer from, um, what? What? I can't read it. Who Who makes that? Hardywood. Hardywood um, beer. You might like it. It's not a bad beer. It's just not my favorite. If you like those kind of beers, it's good. It's from their barrel series, mm-hmm. clearly. Okay. Anywho, um, I probably won't finish mine because I'll probably be asleep mm. in the next five minutes. Just saying. I won't be because I'm going to drive home and then I'm going to have some soup. And then you know what we're doing tomorrow? No. You know my wife. I do. You I've met her. Do you know what tomorrow is? Her birthday. No, it's not. No, that's February. <coughs> tomorrow. It's a holiday. It's a national holiday. Is it really? Uh-huh. Tomorrow. You have to work. Yeah, of course I have to work. I work on all national holidays. What are you talking about? It's MLK Day. Oh, what are you guys going to do? Just think about it. What are we going to do? You're going to go march. That's right. She's going to go march. So I'm going to march with her. Yay. Take some pictures and stuff. Because she's an activist. That's right. And marching is part of being an activist. She enjoys the marching. Yes. So we're going to do that tomorrow. On our Make sure video. she wears her new comfy shoes. She will. Okay. Uh, and um, you're going to be working, taking it easy. You couldn't march with your knee if you wanted to. I couldn't march. if <laughs> I might not march to work. We'll find out. Uh, march to the next show that we do and give us a good review. Was that a good transition? Not at all. I don't think it was either. Nope. Um, anyway... We ho- we're we're very happy that you listen to the show, and we would say um, we're happy when you review the show. Leave us some good good feedback because it helps us out. You can find us on thisepicdisaster dot com. You can send us email at thisepicdisaster at gmail dot com. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We're on YouTube. The shows are on YouTube. You know that every episode I is didn't on know YouTube. That. Yeah, people can go and just listen to them on YouTube. If but they what do what's that. the visual? Nothing. It's just a, a, a graphic. Okay. So don't graphic. look at the screen. Just no. Listen. It's just, just I'm listen. just saying if you, if if that's the only place you could get it. Uh-huh. I mean, I would say subscribe if you can. But sure, if you can, you can find it on YouTube, and then you can find us because we release every Monday. But you can find us on Facebook and all those other good places as well. Because we're there. That's right. We're always there. And pretty soon our knees will be better. We'll be 100. percent And Maybe. we'll be back in the studio next week with uh, I hope a better beer. Um, I think it's possible. I'm gonna get that beer that I had. It was a coconut beer. I don't want to talk. Oh, okay. Sounds nasty. No, no I don't like would, coconut beer. I, you don't it's like, disgusting. You, stop okay, with the coconut. We're still gonna no, get it. It's stop. good. Stop. It's good. No, stop. That beer is really stop. good. And that pizza was awesome. And we also had ice cream. So, pizza, ice cream, <laughs> and beer. And I'm on a diet. Yeah, because that's how that works. We'll talk to you next Monday. All right. Bye. Bye. This is a Violet Jester Media Podcast.